Hey guys, how's it going? So this is Josh with uh, TechZone UK, um, coming out with uh, another video today. Um, right, so I've done a lot of videos recently on um, setting up a, or installing software onto our Linux server, um, but I don't want my, all my videos to be based on software for Linux servers. I want to show you how to use them and how you can communicate and, you know, control uh, Linux servers. So I thought recently, um, you know, there's no better way to learn Linux um, or learn Linux servers uh, than actually doing it by hand and you know getting to grips with how they work and what what do what what does and you know general learning stuff really. Now the best place to get a Linux server from on the cheap is DigitalOcean.com. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can download it easily. Um, they start from five dollars, so it's about three pounds a month, which is pretty much nothing <laughs> um, and then yeah that way you get 512 megs of RAM 20 gig hard drive SSD uh, which is awesome um, for five dollars now I don't buy that one I actually buy um, the ten dollar one which is the most popular plan uh, because then you get one gig of memory um, hard drive space isn't an issue to me uh, and then you get a bit more transfer but I don't think I've ever hit a terabyte of transfer between a server you're not gonna hit a terabyte unless you're transferring data and files and you know things like that. So uh, once you've bought a plan uh, and you've created your own pairs, your monthly payment, you can do pairs you go, but I wouldn't recommend it. But um, definitely go with the monthly. Uh, choose whichever plan you want, even if you want the twenty dollar a month. I mean that's pretty cool. Uh, you get two cores that way. You know it's a bit more speedy. I mean when I get into more uh, system demanding stuff, I'll definitely upgrade to the two gig of memory uh, and two cores. Um, just because I think I'll need it. Um, but anyway, once you create a DigitalOcean account, it'll come up with something like this. And what you need to do is click on Create a Droplet, or click Create on the left-hand side here. And that way you can give it um, a name. I'll call this one SRV01. And then you select your plan here, pretty much, uh, whichever one you want. So basically, you need to click on Sign Up. Then you log in. I forgot about this bit. Uh, so sign up, create an account, log in, and this is where you select the package you want. So obviously here it tells you how much a month it is. I selected that one. And now here it actually allows you to select whereabouts you want your uh, droplet to be. Now, I've had a server in New York 1, New York 2, and Amsterdam 2, and Amsterdam by far has the fastest internet. I've been able to download files at sort of, um, I don't know, 47 meg per second. So I've managed to download a whole... Um, a 500 meg file in less than 14 seconds uh, and that's crazy so I always go with the Amsterdam one and here basically says you know what we want to install now the best thing about this is that they don't just offer Linux distributions they allow you to install applications so they allow you to install Ghost, WordPress, um, GitLab, um, uh, Redmine which I'm not entirely sure what Redmine is but Hey -ho. And then you can actually uh, create snapshots of images and backups and whatnot. So, what I do is I come under Linux distributions, CentOS as always, I stick by that, and I install the 64 bit version of CentOS 6.4. Uh, I keep enable um, virtual O on, uh, basically just enhances the network IOPS, uh, which is basically the input outputs of the network, makes things a bit faster. You can even enable private networking if you want, which is pretty cool. Uh, once you create a droplet, uh, you'll then get an email through um, to obviously your email address, uh, and then they give you a root password. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to do all this live. So I've imagine I've created a droplet called Cloud Server. Um, I'm just going to click on this once it loads, and then I'm going to click on Destroy, and Rebuild, and then I'm going to go to CentOS uh, 6.4. Uh, 64 bit and then rebuild from image and then I'll show you how to connect uh, using SSH as well so we're, we're going to go from the beginning here um, and I'll show you how to create a new user as well so once this event's processing uh, I'm not sure if you felt that in the microphone then but that was my uh, phone going off um, from the email from DigitalOcean and what they do is they send you a link with the IP address and the uh, password uh, for your server now, once this is doing this thing here, what we can do is open up a terminal in the meantime and drag that down here. Let it do its thing, it's still processing. Uh, you can see look how many rebuilds I've done for show you all my events. This is I never have uh, a server edition on for more than a couple of days. Uh, I think between 14 days ago and the four days ago I didn't do anything because I just um, 
I just didn't do anything. <laughs> um, but anyway, that server's now done. It's active. So let's wait a second. There we go. All done in Amsterdam. So we're going to copy the IP address here. Go into our terminal. Now, I'm not sure about you, but with my um, SSH with Mint, uh, it's a bit slow. I don't know why. Um, but uh, anyway, what we need to do is we need to do SSH with the command. And then we're going to type root at, which is the username at, and then the IP address, which is the one that we copied earlier. Now, if you're trying to paste into the terminal, uh, what you need to do is hold down Control, Shift, and then V, uh, and that will then um, paste the IP address. You can't do Control V because when you do that, it gives you a weird sign, um, which it doesn't like. I don't know why. Uh, control V. Okay, maybe not. Doesn't like that. Um, all right. So once you've done that, just hit Enter. Uh, if I can. Uh, give it a sec. It's going to say about the. It's going to say about a verification process now, because I've already had this IP address before. This is to do with the um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the RSA key. Uh, all you need to do is type that. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me just type that in again. Um, basically, because what happens is, is this is what happens when you when you first connect to the server. It says that the RSA fingerprint is that unique number there. That's automatically generated by the server. Uh, and then what happens is, is when you type yes, that um, is then permanently added to the RSA list of known hosts. So what happens is, is if you use that on a trusted network, so at home like I am now, if I go out to a coffee shop, I log on to their Wi-Fi, and then I use the trick where you use SSH and you tunnel all your data through the SSH tunnel, uh, which is secure. Um, basically, when you create the SSH session, if that doesn't uh, see that the right RSA key is there, it knows that someone's trying to listen into your traffic. Now, as you can see here, it says root password. Um, so this is where we open up our phone or whatever you've got your password on and type in your password. Now, you'll probably notice um, it doesn't actually show the keys when you type them in. Uh, let me just open, uh, enter that in, and there we go. Um, basically, in Linux, it doesn't ever show you um, the password. Um, whatever password field you're trying to do, it just doesn't, doesn't show it. Um, it's a security thing, I mean, it means you can type your password and people behind you can't see how many letters it is or uh, anything like that. So now you can see we're now logged in, and if I do LL, uh, obviously we're in the root home folder, so uh, let me just list this out, don't worry about that. You can see we're now into our uh, SSH uh, session, and we're within our Linux box. So, first things first is we need to change the password of our root account, because although you know that password they give you is pretty secure, it's a pain when you have to look it up on your phone or emails or whatever to try and find out what the root password is. Um, so what we do is, because we're logged in as root, uh, we don't need to worry about typing in a username. We can just go ahead and type in P A W S W D, and that will then ask us for a new password for root. Now I have a specific password I use for my uh, root account. It's not a very secure password, but uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, and then uh, let me have a look here. Um, sh 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 um, what we can do now uh, is basically make a new user. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to use add user, and then I always create a user called Josh. Um, and then if we see in our home folder, you'll now see we have a. Um, if I just do a ls, it's probably easier to see. We now have a folder called Josh because obviously it's added the new account. And finally, let's just create a password for Josh or me. Uh, and then again, I have a, a really secure password uh, for that user. Now, a lot of people say you shouldn't use um, the root account as your main um, account when controlling the server. And that's probably right. Um, but what I tend to do is, um, in the SSH config, um, what you can do is, I'll probably show you how to secure, uh, lock down your server a bit better in the future, but what you can do is deny all um, access to the server if someone's trying to log in with root, uh, because root is obviously the main account. And people will throw dictionary attacks and things like that, and when you have a set username that's different to root, it makes it a lot harder uh, to guess what it is. Um, so what you can do is stop people from logging in with the username root, um, and, and that way, uh, when you log in with, say, Josh, what you do is you don't add Josh to the sudo as file, so Josh has no, or your, your new username, sorry, has no administrative access. So basically, you connect your SSH session using, in my case, Josh. I enter the password for that. I then can't do any administrative tasks, and then I log in as root using su, 
and that way it gives you that double extra level of uh, security on your uh, server so that's pretty much it I'm gonna leave it at this video um, you're logged in you've created a new user if you want to change to your other user you can just type in sue Josh and because obviously your root it knows that you are the admin of the uh, server and you'll see if I try doing sudo yum update it will say uh, my password oh, if I get the right password here even if I type it in it will say I'm not added on the sudo's file um, so that's why I need to log in as Sue, and that way it'll ask me for my root password. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more from my channel, then definitely subscribe. And if you've got any comments or questions, or you want to see anything else Linux server side, like um, I could show you how to set up game servers that are Linux based, um, <coughs> I could show you how to set up whatever you want, really. Um, so um, yeah, drop a comment below, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.